built we built it after years. Um, a lot of our clients come to us and say, you know, maybe it's a carrier and they're savvy, they have RF, maybe it's not a carrier, maybe they don't know how to design it. The more of that work we can do in-house, including real estate, all the way through construction, the more we can make smart decisions and help them make smart decisions along the way, the more money they save and the faster the thing goes, it goes so much faster that way. You know, setting up meetings between niche providers all the way along, um, you know, through every segment of the process. On topic six, talking a little bit about system architecture. Today, there is what is traditional tabs, would be a hybrid fiber coax solution. You have all fiber digital tabs, you have cat based by digital super tabs, and you have small cells. How should the correct solution be chosen for a particular enterprise client? Yeah, I, there's low cost uh, options. There's I think Ellen Drive, I mean, I think uh, 
Shul has its place, and probably nobody here sees monster bass as being, you know, everywhere all the time. Uh, there's so many little niches to fill in. Um, specifically, spider cloud comes to mind. If some of these technologies work out the way they're uh, supposed to work, as we see that uh, be installed in the U.S. Uh, very, very soon. Uh, it's exciting. It's, it's, you know, things like that are the exact right tool for the problem in a lot of areas. So we see a lot of development there. You know, I see, um, as, I, as I stated earlier already, uh, I see that the, the sands of the foundation of what we've been doing in the past have already started to shift. And I, and I see um, the industry, you know, the models that we've been using um, going away in the near future um, and accelerating very quickly. I think that the old model that we've used with the crowns and the ATCs of the world um, has, has got to, uh, we've got to find a way to accelerate not using those models anymore. We have to find ways to put the newer technologies into, into use and we have to find ways to expand the, the concept that the that the verticals are going to provide you know, the, the infrastructure themselves. If they, if they want to provide it to their customers. So we had experience with a very large hospitality entertainment company a few weeks ago, and where you know they're coming to me and saying, you've got to put, you've got to run these data systems that we put, we're, we've hired a third party to put in place for us. And you've got to pay, you know, several million dollars to run the system because your customers are coming to my front desk and complaining about your and, and my answer back to that was, no, they're your customers. They're coming to complain to you because you haven't provided what they expect in a facility such as yours. And in order for us together to meet our own customer needs, you have to strip away the third party that's been put in the middle that's charging you millions of dollars to be there. Oh, and by the way, you have to get rid of what you're also making off of that if you expect them to be there. We have to change the model. We have to strip away the recurring costs to the landlords. We have to strip away the extra costs to the third parties. And we have to get to the cheapest, most cost-effective way to do it. If it's teaching the landlords that all four of us have to come and put our own IP or access node in there because that's going to provide everyone the best service, that's what we need to do. At the end of the day, what we've been doing is not going to work for the long term. We've got to stop. We've got to find a new way to do it. From an engineering perspective, I mean, it's uh, your construction worker, right? You use different tools for different things. That's not like one thing is going to disappear uh, over the other. Uh, what we do see is that the more increase in small cell that we're seeing uh, because of some of the issues that, that, that I was mentioning. Even though small cell technology is still very early, right? Song is still at a very, very early uh, phase. So, uh, you know, we're going to be seeing more virtualization of networks, being able to move traffic around, uh, like uh, Matt was mentioning. That, that's some of the things that we uh, see coming up in the future. Yeah, you know, if you think about Wi-Fi, and, and you know, it's sort of needed to live in this environment where there's a lot of interference out there. There have been a lot of very innovative technologies, game forming, things like that. Uh, you know, I know for Wi-Fi, uh, you know, I think some of that's you know, has, has moved over into the, into the license space, but I think we'll see you know, uh, more and more of Unfortunately, I think uh, for, for some that have a business model uh, that is, is sustaining now is probably going to change. But for, for the sake of what we do, um, we still believe that it's going to go to digital uh, and intelligence at the edge. It's going to go from the switch to the remote. And it's going to be, um, it, the future is going to be the fact that uh, the software uh, within those intelligence systems are going to be efficiently enough to be flexible for what the carrier's needs are. It's going to move from a hardware-centric deployment strategy to a software configurable and software-defined network from the switch out to the edge, what we call the edge, if you to the remote.
Perspective that, that we have to change the, the paradigm of the industry. Um, if the most cost effective solution is for us to have to put four access units in a facility, that's what we have to start educating people to do. The, the neutral host systems for a hospital are just not cost effective. Now, I believe that the, that the technologies will continue to develop so that. The, the lower cost single user um, systems that we're seeing will morph into much lower cost multi-user systems in the future. But as we make that transition today, we have to make sure that we're not pigeonholing ourselves. And, and, and frankly, that you know, we saw this with in the macro world where companies went out and started selling gas systems as the end-all be-all to municipalities. We probably started writing codes and started thinking, oh, it's the gas systems in it. Well, they didn't overtake the world because they were never effective and cost effective. And it's the same thing as we come into the indoor space. We as an industry have to work together to provide the best, most cost effective solutions for our customers. And it's going to be a balance between educating the venue owners that you have to start bearing the cost. Or if you don't want to start bearing the cost to put in the single user system so that they all come in, then you have to be relaxed and letting, letting the carriers bear the cost, but they're going to put in their most cost effective system, which could be up to four in your facility. That's the paradigm we have to shift. We have to stop doing things that are not going to drive us forward for the future. And that's what we're doing today. We're continuing to use the same models, the same real estate principles, the same paradigm that's going to make it cost prohibitive for us in the future. We need to shift that. I mean, it, you see innovation coming all the time, right? Uh, so one of the one of the things that you already hear about is uh, neutral host small cells. So I can think of like at least two vendors off the top of my head, uh, Airvana and Spider Cloud, that at least have talked about that preliminary. So uh, I think eventually we'll we'll, we'll get to that.